today fjords how scandinavian can you get <laughs> course more is where you can see the earth inside out let's get going i'm so excited we're michael and Holof. Together with our German Shepherd, Kana, This is for you. Oh. We've been traveling full-time around the United States in our camper van. Kana, what you doing? We arrived in Canada to explore the vast land of the Great White North. So come, join us and travel around Canada in our home on wheels. This is how much dried lobster mushroom sells for online. Previously, we found some wild lobster mushrooms in Grand Falls, Windsor, Newfoundland. And we cooked them in a great lobster mushroom risotto. We're still learning a lot about wild mushrooms. Our van life journey continues in the western part of Newfoundland, where Grossmorn Park, a famous national park, is located. Newfoundland is my home province and it has two national parks, Grossmorn and Terranova. And Grossmorn happens to be the one that I've never been to before. So I am really excited about visiting. And it also happens to be a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Well, that's right. The plan for the time we're here, which is a short time unfortunately, is to do a couple of hikes. Let's get going. I'm so excited both to see this national park and get away from these black flies. <laughs> yeah, they are everywhere. Oh, uh, let's go back to yep, the yep. There are lots of trails around Gross Morn, and we're set to hike our first. The first thing to do this morning is to hike the Tablelands hiking trail. And this is one of the must-do hiking trails here in Gross Morn. Even though it's very clean here, it says that plants growing in this is like trying to grow in a toxic junkyard. Peridotite. Peridotite. Why is it heavy? because it contains like a lot of minerals. This is almost metal. It contains magnesium, nickel, cobalt, all that kind of stuff. Which I know because the sign's right in front of me. On this side, nothing really grows. On this side, it's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful on both sides, but. Tablelands is, in fact, a very special place. It's one of the few places in the world where you can see and feel the Earth's exposed mantle. We spent our morning here, walking around this barren desert. Unfortunately, the day is not really the perfect ideal day to hike because it's about to rain. But hopefully we'll be able to do this hike before the rain. It's very Newfoundland weather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi. You see any moose out there? No. No moose? No. Oh. This is absolutely gorgeous. I think there's a certain mood when you see it in a cloudy day like this. It's starting to feel like Newfoundland. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> the, starting the feeling. <laughs> yeah, the weather's starting to get a little misty and now it's going to start raining probably by the time we get back to the van. I don't mind this weather at all. This is Michael in his natural habitat. Right. <laughs> and the pitcher plants are oh, there. Yeah. I've never seen them before. Like they're on the logo. Like the so the pitcher plant is Newfoundland's provincial flower. It has a nice little flower on top, and at the bottom it has sort of a scoop, I guess you'd call it, where insects will fly in, and like the Venus flytrap, the plant eats it. So it's a carnivorous plant, oh. and it's our state, our who I said our state flower, our provincial flower. Not too far from Tablelands is the Discovery Center. A visitor center where you can learn about Grossmore National Park, its unique geological features, and local culture. Jackson's Arm. It's a really nice museum with a lot of information. It's a gross day in Grossmore. <laughs> but mask has to be on. We got our passport stamps here as well. After the Discovery Center, we continue on with our second hike of the day. It's a nice cloudy day here, nice cool temperatures, perfect day to go on a hike. So we're going to Bakersbrook Falls and it is a 10 kilometer hike. Got my hiking pants on, got a dog to carry me. Looks pretty already. You can go in. Yeah, but I don't know why you go in. Like I can't tell what it is. You wanna go in and just see? Hell yeah. I assume nothing would have pointed us here if we didn't go in. You know, this reminds me of the Jurassic Park when they have like a T-Rex and stuff eating the goat. So this makes sense now. What Paris Canada has done here is they've built an exclosure 
it's a 100 square meter fenced area that the moose can't get into to show what the forest would look like if there was no moose here. And it is a lot denser and a lot more variety out here for sure. That's why it's called the moose exclosure. Yeah, it says the favorite food plants of moose are thriving inside this 100 meter square exclosure. Outside, the only plants that do well are those that moose will not eat. All right, let's close it properly so that moose can't go in. There you go. They say these were all descended from four moose brought and released here in 1904. The moose here must be so inbred that they could almost be a royal family. Stop getting muddy. This is what everybody's talking about and kind of doesn't care. No, nope, you don't need to say you want to call and drop that camera. Yeah. <laughs> you did it! <laughs> you want me to fall. That would be interesting. <laughs> blooper. You were looking for a blooper. <laughs> Look at her paws. What a mess. Huh? What a mess, kinda. Almost there. What do you think, Michael? <laughs> I think getting down is gonna be worse than coming up them because you're gonna splash when you go down them. Well, but we look, we've come this far. If we don't see it, well, we just walked through all that mud for. Let's go. I think that's the end of the trail, right there. I'm glad I didn't wear my shorts. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no kidding. Worth the hike? Oh my God. No, it's, it's a nice waterfall. You gonna try to wipe her paws off? I don't think she's enjoying no. it. Okay. Hey! <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> you managed not to get wet. Uh, sort of. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? <laughs> Next, we're visiting Woody Point, a small historic fishing village surrounded by national park lands. There, you can find a picturesque harbor and colorful houses lining the coastline. Absolutely a gorgeous spot to camp. You can just breathe out here. It is such a cute, cute little town. The weather is so nice and it's not hot and you open the fan windows, doors, it's just fresh air coming in. So life is good. Van life is good. I love all these colorful houses. It just reminds me of Svalbard. Very tundra-ish, but I know obviously it's not tundra. But this is what I think of communities up north in northern Norway and Sweden, Greenland. Now it's Newfoundland. So cute! This is where we spent the night last night, here in Cowhead. There's actually a trail right behind me. There's a lighthouse, an amphitheater. It's a great moondocking spot. And it's such a beautiful morning, not complaining. <sighs> Just enjoying coffee now. Coffee is good. We have big plans this morning to go out and view the iconic Gross Morn experience. See anything? These are the worst binoculars ever. <laughs> they're probably either been there for 25, 30 years. They're bad. <laughs> Maybe they're backwards. At least you can see one way through these things. Oh God. <laughs> that is so funny. It is a beautiful morning and we couldn't ask for better weather to be here at Western Brook Pond. We are going to take a boat ride. Unfortunately, Kana can't come with us because there's no dogs allowed in the boats. But we are going to be riding through the fjords of Grossmore National Park, which is an iconic experience here. In order to get to the pond itself, there's a hike involved. That's about three kilometer hike. Even if you didn't do the boat ride, just coming out here and looking at... No, it's not the same. No. And you gotta do the boat ride. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And we haven't even done it yet. We just know that it's going to be fantastic. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So let's get going. Let's start hiking in to catch our boat at 1230. So those are our fjords that we're going to. It's really warm here right now, but when we get on that boat, it's gonna be cold. Black jacket in the sun doesn't help. We are so lucky. We haven't had weather like this in a couple of weeks, and this is gonna be a perfect, perfect day to go out in a boat. Look how still the water is. It's amazing. 50 bucks says it starts raining as soon as we get on the boat. 
What do you think? <laughs> wah, wah, wah. You know, I sort of like the fact that it's a three and a half kilometer walk in because you get to see kind of a setup of what you're going to see up close. And if you just went right there in a car or something, I think you'd miss out on a bit. I mean, look at this. It's amazing. It's just beautiful. I can't think of any other words to describe things that amazing and beautiful. <laughs> Got a beautiful sunny day, and sunny day means solar panels working. <laughs> Our battle bone batteries are charging. Well, we should have a full charge by the time we get back to this. Yes. Making a good dinner tonight, too. Ooh. On the stove, no generator. <laughs> My goodness, this is beautiful. That's our boat. I'm gonna start boarding at 12.50. Lighting up. Yep, everybody's looking for the best seats. Here we go, <laughs> line's moving. You got tickets? You have tickets. Oh, I do. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Oh, we got a nice day to do this. Oh, beautiful day. <laughs> Hello. Especially in September. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody wants to go upstairs. We're, we're now really top heavy. <laughs> Can you imagine if it's pouring rain? <laughs> if anything, I am so convinced that weather in Newfoundland is extremely unpredictable. How's everybody doing? Now you're talking. Guys, uh, whoever brought the good weather, thank you. Is this actually still September? This is great. For the next two hours, our tour guide took us around Western Brook Pond, a pristine freshwater lake that is surrounded by steep rock walls, 600 meters or 2,000 feet high. So that mountain right there, guys, is actually 150 meters taller than the CN Tower in Toronto. A fjord-like landscape was formed, making it the iconic scene of Grossmoor National Park. So the tour guide was saying that all of the damaged woods that we saw, we all thought it was like an infestation of bugs or something, but it turns out it's all moose damage. Damage that a moose can do. So moose is not good for National Park. natural. And what you're seeing here, guys, is what's known as a diabased dike. So guys, that line you're seeing right here is actually volcanic rock that happened to flow in and run down these mountains. So apparently the rocks here are made of something called granitic gneiss, and I'm not sure what that is, but it's a type of granite. And they are 1.3 billion years old, and if you want to compare that to the Rocky Mountains, the Rocky Mountains are something like 600 million, 650 million years old. So these are some of the oldest rocks on the planet. There's a beautiful waterfall up there, guys. Now that waterfall you see up there is known as White Point Falls. Now guys, Waypoint Falls, like all the rest of Our tour guides pointed out a few notable waterfalls around Western Brook Pond. Now guys, this waterfall's got a little bit of a different name to it. And I assure you, none of us here in Bomb Tours has anything to do with the naming all the waterfalls you've seen here today. Okay guys, look out here to your left. You're gonna see a beautiful hidden waterfall. All blue, We couldn't have had a better day for this. It's amazing. I don't know. I didn't hear what he said. I thought he said something about an old man. Oh, okay. I see that. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's very tall. So there's a natural carve out in the rock up here, and it looks like the face of a lion or a monkey or something, but they actually call it the Tin Man. That was already taken. I don't know. See you guys. It actually does look like the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. Don't know which way to look. It just all so pretty. <laughs> yeah, it's very distracting when you look at one point and then. You just kind of look out the corner dry, you see something else. Yeah. It's like an explosion in your senses. Yeah. Our hikers, it is now time for you to get your packs ready and meet us at the back of the boat. It's almost time for you to park. Everybody wave to our hikers. Enjoy your hike, guys. Some people wonder what we feed the bears here in Grosvenor National Park. <laughs> of course I'm kidding, guys. Enjoy your hike. Finally, we approach the end of Western Brook Pond, where one can take the iconic touristy photos of Grossmore National Park. Is it worth it or not? Yeah, it's worth the drive in, but the wind is blowing this way. So as we're going out, we're getting colder. <laughs> We've already seen everything. I wish we could just teleport back to the thing. Yeah. We were told that this is the iconic Grossmore. Yeah, it's pretty stunning here. The only thing I've put it up against so far is Milford Sound. Ooh, yeah. But 
pretty impressive. Yeah. We had to come downstairs for a bit because it was a little bit cold upstairs. Now we're heading back to the Western Brook Pond Dock to end our day on the fjords. And it's a good time to end because the sun is gone and we are back to cloudy day. So. Time to kick back and relax, catching a ride back to the dock with these Newfoundland folk songs. And our last stop in Grossmore is the wreckage of an SS FB. When we first got here, it looked really, really cold outside, so I put on a pair of pants, put on my puff jacket, and then we got outside the van, and it was, this wind is actually pretty warm. Not much left after 1919. There are some rusted metals here and there. Definitely a pretty beach. There's a lot of boulders along the beach, and I understand how ship can be just completely wrecked here. For sure. This wreck was carrying 92 passengers when it went, got into some trouble. The captain used all the coal on the ship, trying to keep it from landing on the rocks, but eventually he ran out of coal and decided to ditch on the rocks. It turns out that a local person saw what was happening and knew exactly what the danger was, and he came down to help out with the rescue. There was a rope on board that was put out, and the passengers eventually made it to shore, including an 18-month-old baby. Now, legend has it, and this is the story I've heard, that a Newfoundland dog actually either went out or brought in the rope from the ship. Makes a Newfoundland dog sound great. We also uh, are pretty sure that this dog would be pretty useless at something like that. Wouldn't you? Yes, you would. Wouldn't you? Yeah, you would. That's it from Gross More. We really hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed making it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe to our adventures around Canada and the United States, push that subscribe button. And if you want to get notifications every time we post something new, ring the bell! <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Yes, every trick of that place was fall tonight by Murphy Day. What a beautiful day, eh? It's just so pretty out here. That's the biggest speed limit sign that I've ever seen. 50! Only go 50! How do you like your Mustang now, dude? I swear, officer, I didn't see the sign. <laughs> you know why I stopped you? Because I let you.